We come tonight joyful and triumphant, knowing what Christ has done. But we also come as broken people living in a broken world. While we celebrate the birth of Christ, we also come to the manger knowing the world is not as it should be. So tonight we stop and take time to lament. What exactly is lament? Lament is the expression of the intense groaning that we feel as we long for the coming kingdom of shalom. Lament looks at what's wrong square in the face, names it for what it is, and protests against it. The world is not as it should be. We, like Israel, yearn for the coming of the Messiah and the full arrival of his kingdom. Therefore, we lament. But as we lament, we also testify to and cling to our hope that Jesus will return and he will make all things right. We find comfort in the Christmas story. A helpless baby born into a world that was struggling. A helpless baby born in a cold stone room into a refugee family that was poor, tired, and frightened. Jesus is the Son of God, born as a man, despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. This is our God. He knows our suffering and hears our lament. Jesus, born to set thy people free, from our fears and sins release us, let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever, now thy gracious kingdom Eternal Spirit, rule in all our hearts alone. By thine all sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. As we gather tonight, I remind you of where our hope is. Respond with me. People of God, where does your help come from? I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. That Lord is with us tonight. May the God of all comfort comfort us in order that we might claim that hope that is ours in and through Jesus Christ, by the power of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people say together, Amen. As we gather here tonight, I invite you to wave or smile at that person next to you if you can see them and uh, pass that peace of Christ to one another. Would you please rise if you are able? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the one true God, full of grace and truth. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. 
For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, the Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Angels, we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Sighing has become my daily food. My groans pour out like water. What I fear has become of me. What I dreaded has happened to me. I have no peace, no quietness. I have no rest, but only turmoil. Hear my prayer, Lord. Let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me when I am in distress. Turn your ear to me when I call. Answer me quickly, for my days vanish like smoke. My bones burn like glowing embers. My heart is blighted and withered like grass. I forget to eat my food. In my distress, I groan aloud and am reduced to skin and bones. Many of us have experienced the intense heartache of losing those we love. We are brokenhearted and crushed in spirit. We wonder if we will ever feel good again, ever feel hope again. We are desperate to soothe the searing emotional pain that has invaded our existence. Tonight we pause to remember their names, their faces, their voices. No longer being able to be with them, talk to them, or hold them is at times almost more than we can bear. Hear us, O shepherd, you who lead, lead your people like a flock. Awaken your might. Come and save us. Make, Make your, your face shine on us that we may be saved. We light this candle, announcing our full assurance that Jesus has triumphed over sin and death. Death does not speak the final word in the life of the believer. And so we whisper with tear-stained faces, O oh, death, where is your victory? Where is your sting? See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his gifts accompany him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. 
He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those who have young. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. O come, O bright and morning star, and bring us comfort from afar. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to us. the God who saved me. Day and night I cry out to you. May my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cries. I am overwhelmed with troubles and my life draws near to death. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like one without strength. When all the hard things stay in our lives, Instead of fading into the past, we may repeatedly experience what Christians through the ages have described as a dark night of the soul. Depression, a difficult marriage, a child who has walked away from faith, or a chronic illness can make God seem distant, joy a lost jewel, and faith a pile of disassembled parts. We wonder if God has abandoned us or is punishing us. Hear us, O shepherd. You who lead your people like a flock, awaken your might. Come and save us. Make, Make your, your face, face shine on us that we may be saved. saved. We light this candle, giving testimony that even when pain lingers, his mercies are new every morning, and even morning after morning after morning. The Lord upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. 
The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are, who are bowed lo- down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. O Lord of light, our only hope of glory, your radiance shines in all who look to you. Come, light the hearts of all in dark and shadow. O spring of joy, rain down upon our spirits. Our thirsty hearts are yearning for your words. Come, make us whole. Be comfort to our hearts. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to us. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sin, Lord, who could stand? I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than a watchman waits for the morning. We have all waded into the bitter waters of sin. We struggle with secret sins, popular sins, fascinating sins, and the deceitfulness of sin. Sin promises to make us special, or give us status, or keep us comfortable. And so we succumb to its temptation, failing to recognize the lies. Have I believed that just one more drink from the pool of possession would satisfy, only to find myself thirsty for more? Has a spring of unforgiveness in the interior of my heart left me neck deep in a pool of bitterness that is choking the life out of me? Have I come thirsty to an alluring pool of sexual satisfaction only to have the bitter taste of shame and regret left in my mouth. Like a wolf in sheep's clothing, sin deceives each one of us, and we lament the times we have failed to walk away. Hear us, O shepherd, you who lead your people like a flock. Awaken your might. 
come and save us. May your face shine on us that we may be saved. We light this candle to remind ourselves to drink deeply of the Lord who heals our sin-sick souls. He sees us, hears us, forgives us, and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We have been, new, been made new, and we are being made new. Glory to God in the highest. You, Lord, see the troubles of the afflicted. You consider their grief and take it in hand. The victims commit themselves to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. You, Lord, hear the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them, and you listen to their cry, defending the fatherless and the oppressed, so that mere earthly mortals will never again strike the terror. No more let sin and sorrow grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessing flow, for as the curse is found, joy to the world. Timothy, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than of lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. The world is cast into violence, war, unrest, and poverty when humanity's selfish desire for power is left unchecked. Humanity's love of self has paved our streets with homelessness, racism, and mean-spirited speech. The brokenness in our homes leaves a trail of loneliness, neglect, and abuse. We lament the brokenness in our churches that leads to division, apathy, and a gospel message that stops short of a call to repentance.
Hear us, O shepherd, you who lead your people like a flock. Awaken your might. Come and save us. Make, Make your, your face shine on us, that we may be saved. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Behold, the darkness covers the earth, and deep darkness is over the people. But the Lord arises over you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your dawn. We light this candle, knowing that Jesus will return, and every knee will bow. No longer will violence be heard in the land. The sun will no more be our light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on us, for the Lord will be our everlasting light, and our days of sorrow will end. The Lord, our God, will receive all the glory. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his root a branch will bear fruit. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decision for the poor. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. O oh, come, desire of nations, Bind all people in one heart and mind. Bind all our sad divisions cease. And be thyself our king of peace. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to us. From Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, 
that she has received from the Lord's hand, double for all her sins. The voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all the people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is the word of our Lord. The word of the Lord comes to Israel during a very difficult time. They were living in exile, far from home. Life as they knew it seemed to be over. This was their new normal. And yet God brings a message. I'm coming to rescue my people. Oh, indeed, as we hear this voice calling in the wilderness, they were in that wilderness. When we think of a wilderness, we might think of a remote place out in the desert. But a wilderness can happen in suburbia. It can happen in small towns. It can happen in inner cities. A wilderness is that place where we feel far from home. Far from God. And yet, tonight, my friends, listen for God's word to them and also to us. God brings this message, I come to comfort you. God announces a double comfort, that is a full comfort to a people, that their exile will soon be over. I don't know about you, but this is comforting for me to hear this message. When it seems like the world has fallen apart and there seems to be no end to that brokenness we see around us, but God sees. God sees and he will restore, that's his word. Indeed, it might be troubling for Israel at that time Wondering, how did God allow this? Well, we know. It's part of the brokenness of our own world. And it's part of our brokenness, too. For God had not left them. They had left God. And yet God does not give up on them. God is with them. It was certainly good news. But I'm sure it was also challenging news. As noted, they are far from home. How are we going to get home? How are we going to get through all of this? And yet God makes a promise. I'll get you home. And when God says it, it's true. Later on in the passage, we read how God's word lasts. The things of this world will pass away. But God says, my word will last. When he promises salvation, it will happen. When he speaks comfort, it will be given. A challenge, but also a comfort. That must have been for them, but also for us tonight. To boldly declare that God is here. Despite what we see around us, takes courage and faith. But that's what we're called to do in that winter of the soul, in the midst of that dark night of the soul. God has come, and he will come. That's the promise. And we gather here tonight trusting in that. But we also acknowledge that not everything is right. And maybe that's where you are here tonight. Maybe you find Christmas a, a bit difficult this year. And we've named many reasons for that tonight. Perhaps it is loss, a broken relationship, or you're dealing with illness or stress, 
Or perhaps it's something else. You look around and you wonder where God is in our broken world. And you know that life is hard at Christmas, or when life is hard at Christmas, it can feel doubly hard. Sure, Christmas is that most wonderful time of the year for some, but maybe not for all. And maybe it used to be for you, but maybe not this year. And sometimes Christmas seems to remind us of the things that aren't the way they are meant to be. Well, that's not surprising, because if you think about it, the way we celebrate Christmas in our culture is often trying to relive the past. It's about traditions. And traditions intend to give us comfort in a world that keeps changing. And that's good. But things do change. And we do suffer loss. And it can make it feel worse. We want that Christmas spirit back again. But I'm here tonight to remind you of God's word of comfort. For indeed, that's at the heart of Christmas. It's not just in the past, it's in the present, as well as in the future. The true meaning of Christmas is the promise that God made to us, a promise that God fulfills right now. He is with us. And he makes that promise that those who may be going through that brokenness, those who are going through that darkness, will. Will see that light. It's not a promise that things will be the way they used to be, but a promise that there will be a new day filled with new hope and new joy. Christmas is about God coming to us and being with us here and now in our hearts tonight. Gently healing us, gathering us in his arms, lifting our burdens, giving us life, reminding us who we are in his sight, forgiving us, gently enabling us to even forgive ourselves, to let go of that anger, our pain, our despair. For Christ is born in us, and among us. Sometimes that may be hard to see, and I know that it's not easy and it's not quick. That's why we have a service like this, to honor that pain, to acknowledge that things aren't always right, but to also acknowledge that the Bible says, bring your laments to God, and through that, bring your trust that he is with you. Christ was born, and he continues to incarnate this world with his hope and his light and his life. I turn with you to the final verses of Isaiah chapter 4. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow weary or tired, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary, increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. This is that promise of God. And I think about those closing verses. Sometimes God indeed rescues. It's quick. He gets us out of a situation or changes that situation. And we soar on wings like eagles. Like an eagle, God dies into our hopelessness, and we we are lifted up. I think of when our Lord walked this earth and brought healing 
healing, for example, to ten lamenting lepers, and, and he lifted up. They rose on wings like eagles. But that's not the only way, nor in my experience the most frequent. Sometimes God helps not by rescuing, but by coming alongside with us so that we can be restored. His power works within us so that we can run and not grow weary, even when we want to give up. Reminded of how God led his people in that exodus. Things weren't always easy. And yet, he was that everlasting God, that God of faithfulness. And he journeyed with them. There's a third example here where we walk and not faint. There are times when God doesn't change the situation at all. Instead, he gives us the strength to endure in order that we are personally renewed. The situation may not change, but we do. We grow stronger through his grace. As Paul discovered regarding that thorn in the flesh, he had asked for it to be removed. But he wasn't healed. But instead, he testified to how grace was available to him. And he noted, in all of this, we may not understand God's ways as the prophet acknowledged, but God is in control. And we keep our eyes focused on the Christ. And if we keep our eyes on Christ dying and rising and ruling for our sake, we will not be disappointed with God. For his promise is this, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. I close with a poetic prayer penned by Charlon Sledge. Let's pray. God of heaven and earth, in this drama of Advent and Christmas, our lives don't always follow the expected script. Some of us are hurting from the inside out as much as others are celebrating their joy. Amid talk about fulfillment, loss looms large. Remind us that you come to us as the incarnate Christ, that you are with us, whether we have mustered enough strength to light a candle or decided to sit in the darkness, you are here. And you reach out to us, whether we are singing jubilantly or weeping uncontrollably. So we wait. We wait for you to come to us where we are, as we are. Numb, grieving, fragile, perhaps out of sync with the season songs. Punch a hole in that darkness and let in that glimmer of hope. Shine on us, O oh God. We need you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite us to sing our prayer. Shine on us, and I invite you, if you're able, to stand.
the wolf will lie with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the lion will feed together. And a little child will lead them. The infant will play near the cobra's den. And the young child will put its hand in the viper's nest. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. In, In that day, the great, great shepherd of the sheep will return, and he will save us. He will restore us and will bring us home to live and reign with him forever. Amen and amen. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you follow him, in order that you might overflow with hope in the risen and the reigning Christ. And all God's people respond by saying together, Amen. Amen. 